Wangari's Trees of Peace, a true story from Africa, written by Jeanette Winter. The earth was naked. For me, the mission was to try to cover it with green. Wangari Matai. Wangari lives under an umbrella of green trees in the shadow of Mount Kenya in Africa. She watches the birds in the forest where she and her mother go to gather firewood for cooking. And she helps harvest the sweet potatoes, sugarcane, and maize from the rich soil. Wangari shines in school, and when she grows tall, like the trees in the forest, she wins a scholarship to study in America. Six years later, her study is over, Wangari returns to her Kenya home and sees a change. What has happened? She wonders. Where are the trees? Wangari sees women bent over from hauling firewood miles and miles from home. She sees barren land where no crops grow. And where are the birds? Thousands of trees have been cut down to make room for buildings, but no one planted new trees to take their place. Will all of Kenya become a desert? She wonders as tears fall. Wangari thinks about the barren land. I can begin to replace some of the lost trees here in my own backyard, one tree at a time. She starts by planting nine seedlings. Watching the seedlings take root gives Wangari the idea to plant more, to start a farm for baby trees, a nursery, and an open space. She plants row after row of tiny trees. Next, Wangari convinces the village woman that planting trees is a good thing. She gives each one a seedling. Our lives will be better when we have trees again. You'll see. We are planting the seeds of hope. The woman spread out over their village, planting tiny trees in long rows, like a green belt stretching over the land. The government men laugh. Women can't do this, they say. It takes trained foresters to plant trees. The woman ignore the laughter and keep planting. Wangari pays them a small amount for each seedling still living after three months, their first earnings ever. Word travels, like wind rustling through leaves, about the green returning to Wangari's village. Soon other women in other villages and towns and cities in Kenya are planting long rows of seedlings too. But the cutting continues. Wangari stands tall as an oak to protect the old trees still remaining. We need a park more than we need an office tower. Government men disagree. Wangari blocks their way, so they hit her with clubs. They call her a troublemaker and put her in jail. And still she stands tall. Right is right, even if you're alone. Wangari is not alone. Talk of the tree spreads all over Africa like ripples in Lake Victoria. More women hear the talk and plant even more seedlings in longer and longer rows. The seedlings take root and grow tall, until there are over 30 million trees where there were none. The umbrella of green in Kenya returns. Women walk tall, their backs straight, for now they can gather firewood closer to home. The land is no longer barren, Sweet potatoes, sugarcane, and maize grow again in the rich red earth. The whole world hears of Wangari's trees and of her army of women who planted them. If you were to climb to the very top of Mount Kenya today, you would see the millions of trees growing below you, and the green Wangari brought back to Africa. People are fighting over water, over food. We plant the seeds of peace. Wangari Matai.